Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our sports special. With me, with me today is former Kiwi hooker Colin O'Neill, who will be offering comments on this afternoon's test match at half time and then again after the uh, match is finished. New Zealand today have a chance to wrap up this three match series against Great Britain. They won the first test just over a week ago at the uh, Kalor Park ground in Auckland by 12 points to nil, two tries to nil, and a good opportunity today for New Zealand to win their first uh, rugby league series over Great Britain since 1971. Let's go to Christchurch now, where I believe the weather is not too good. Our Commentators are Tony Palmer and Mike O'Donnell. Thank you, Peter. Good afternoon and welcome to the Addington Showgrounds here in Christchurch, the home of rugby league in these parts where, once again, shame about the weather. It's not as bad as it was at Carlow Park last week for the first test. It has been fine here most of the week, but at 8 o'clock this morning it started to rain and, of course, the very top surface is going to be very slippery, a day for long sprigs, which may just take an ounce of glamour out of both sides. Hopefully the Kiwis will still play running open football and hopefully the Englishman will try and keep up with them. Mike O'Donnell, what prospects for today's second test? Well, Tony, the ground is, is not as wet as Auckland last week. Uh, the English team have made three changes in the back line, the two halves and the wing, and they're all speedsters, and the, the obvious, uh, their obvious answer is to run the ball, score tries and win this test match and, and try and make a series of it. Well, it really is crunch time for the Great Britain side on the losing end of a three-test series in Australia and now about to face the same thing. So they've got to pull their socks up today. Let's have a look at those teams and the changes. Starting with the Great Britain side, a couple the of changes right wing, in the back line today. Two, Mick Burke is still fullback. Mel. There's Drummond still on the right wing. But Ellery Hanley has been moved from the left wing to pair up with Keith Mumby in the centres. The 19-year-old speedster from Witness, Joe Lydon, takes that wing berth. Tony Myler's happily recovered from his food poisoning, so he comes back in at standoff. At halfback, Neil Holding has been played out of his position by excellent form of Andy Gregory against Northern Districts and Central Districts. The pack's exactly the same as for the first test. David Hobbs, the captain, Brian Noble and Brian Case are the front row. Behind them, the hard-working second row pair of Chris Burton and Andy Goodway and veteran loose forward Mick Adams. Today's reserves, John Joyner and Kevin Beardmore. For the Kiwis, no changes to this side from last week. Mark Graham once again unavailable through injury. Gary Campbell has had an excellent game at fullback. Watch him again for the key to the tactics. The wings, Dean Bell and Dane O'Hara. Dean Bell was our player of the day last week. The centres, James Lulawai and Fred Arcoy, the captain, both scored tries in the first test. Once again, there'll be a lot of play around Olsen Filipina at standoff, and we expect another lively game from Shane Barley at halfback. A classy pack with a lot of pace comprises Kurt Sorensen and Owen Wright in the second row, Hugh McGann, the loose forward, behind a very tough front row of Kevin Tamati, Howie Tamati and Dane Sorensen. The Kiwis reserves are two very talented upcoming players in Clayton Friend and Ricky Cowan. While well, Mike O'Donnell, the stage set once again for a classic test encounter, but this time the Great Britain side really have to play themselves to a third test. Oh, they have to, Tony. They've been eight or nine weeks in Australia. They've come from a 3-0 series loss over there. New Zealand's the only place now that they can gain some pride on the, for their tour and for these young guys. So they have, they have to win today. Um, they're very dedicated. I've spoken to some of their players and their officials, and it's an all-out effort today. Really is crunch time for this Great Britain side. As we said, on the losing end of a three-test series in Australia, they lost the first test at Carlaw Park last weekend. So this weekend, they really have a chance to salvage some pride and to turn the tables when everybody is saying that it's a disaster as a tour. This time, they are facing for the fourth time on tour, a referee who has not done a test match before. This time, it's Barry Barnes from Sydney. Last week's Kevin Roberts from Sydney also did a very good job in the wet of letting play go and playing the advantage very well. And let's hope that uh, Barry Barnes can do the same today. Having a look at this Kiwi side, one very interesting point is the halfback and standoff combination, Shane Varley and Olsen Filipina. When you have a look at these two players, numbers six and seven respectively, Shane Varley, number seven, the halfback, is five feet six and ten and a half stone. Now he has legs like pretzels. That's him there in the middle of your picture, Shane Varley. He really is a tiny little fellow, but tough as nails. And outside him, Olsen Filipina at standoff is five feet ten and fifteen and a half stone. The second biggest man on the paddock. Ladies and gentlemen, the New Zealand anthem.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Over the referee, Barney Barnes, now Barry Barnes from Australia. Almost about to get underway now in the second test. Great Britain versus the Kiwis. The Kiwis lead the series 1-0 at the moment through a victory at Carlow Park in Auckland last weekend where they won 12-0, two tries to nil. Addy Gregory starts for Great Britain. Back to Gary Kemble. Hugh McGann in there. Kurt Sorensen couldn't hold it. Going back is James Lulawhite. Kiwi side really keyed up for today's match. Kurt Sorensen. A lot of talking, a lot of chatter, a lot of it nervous. Campbell. Once again, the tactical kicking is going to be a big feature of the game. Gary Campbell last week managed to kick it between the very safe Mick Burke and the not quite so safe Valerie Hadley. Between the two of them he caused enough confusion to give them an advantage. Gary Kemble's line kicking and tactical kicking has improved so much in the last couple of years it's unbelievable. Burke. Chris Burton. Noble. Big kick upfield, something the Great Britain side did not do last week. Dan O'Hara. Yes, they'll be practicing all week, actually. Straight back, 40 or 50 metres downfield. Valerie Hadley playing at number three in the centres today. Played on the wing last week, as he did in Australia. That's Brian Case, big prop forward. The red headband this week. Noble to Hobbs. Hobbs losing it. Howie Tamati picks it up. Shane Barley. Back to Lulawai. Again, the handling problem starting early. A little bit of sloppy passing then. Noble. Hanley. Gregory. Good little player is Andy Gregory. Has literally played his way into this test side for Great Britain with excellent games against Northern Districts and Central Districts. Hanley. He was the most penetrative of the Great Britain backs in the first test. Ellery Hanley, they brought him into the centres where they think he'll be more effective today. Great Britain are obviously going to try and run it today. They've been working on the tactical kicking all week. Good way. Player of the series in Australia. Noble. The kick up. A little bit of confusion there under that ball. Dean Bell couldn't take it. It's gone out. This is a similar start to last week's game. Great Britain were on attack the first 10 minutes last week and they couldn't get through, but they started off in a similar vein this week. They're, they've got the pressure on and they're holding the ball. Kiwi ball. Bali has it. Dean Bell. Running it himself, once again, slipping the first tackle. Superb game last week, Dean Bell. Owen Wright running onto it. Dane Sorensen. Yes, I can't work what that was out. I thought there might have been a penalty New Zealand's way for the tackle. Yes, obviously Dane Sorens did something illegal in the tackle there. The referee was there, so... Uh... Let's have a look at it again. I thought Kurt Sorensen might have been lucky enough to get a penalty out of that for the Kiwis. Yes, that's a strange one for Mr Barnes. Great Britain trying to run it up. Ten metres out. Noble waiting. Hanley. Here's Drummond, in fact. Olsen Filipina has it. Kiwi's in possession. Dane Sorensen flicks it out. Howie Tamati can't hold it. Knocked on. Yes, in the first five minutes we've had, we've had about seven drop balls. That's a, that's a bad sign. The ball wouldn't be that wet yet. Very quick and nippy around the scrubs is Andy Gregory. 
Yes, he left uh, when they left England. He was the number one, but he got put out by holding. But he's since retained his place. 22-year-old from Witness, Andy Gregory. He's likened by many commentators to the great Tommy Bishop. He's played five tests. This is his sixth. Campbell for the line. Fairly conservative, but it got there. Shane Barley. This is the fame war movement they've got. They've been training at this move all week, so we'll just see how, how they can come through it. See how well it works in the wet. The ball goes right back. Well, it had some of the people fooled for some of the time. Olsen Filipina. Again, bumping off that first tackle. They'll have to assign two men to him today. Dane Sorensen. Howie Tamadi, Bali, Kevin Tamadi. Great Britain defence has been pretty good so far. Owen Wright. Chip through too far. Nine minutes gone in this second test, no score. Case. Noble. Gregory. Kick from David Hobbs. Campbell's back there and safe. Running it back up. Bali. Little way. Sorensen. Here's the Great Britain side standing offside, then inside the five metres. The referee had no doubt about it. I think it's a bit too far. They won't go for a goal. Kimber will probably put it out. Fairly tentative start to this second test in Christchurch. A lot of handling errors. Bali. Kiwi's right up on attack now. Bali. Oh, slipping through the first one. Caught in the second. Shane Barley, lively as ever. Tabadee to Sorensen. Just Kurt Sorensen. Kurt Sorensen on the burst. So strong. Just a couple of metres short of the line now. Kiwi's right up on attack. Dane Sorensen. Howie Tabadee. Whipped it back to Kevin Tabadee. Going wide this time. Shane Varley with a little kick. And Mick Adams is underneath it. Great Britain in possession. Gregory. Trying to run it out now from right on their own line, Great Britain. Once again, they started very hard and fast in the first 10 minutes, but it didn't take the Kiwis long to get their measure. inspired Kiwi side out there at the moment. Burke. Dean Bell. Bali. Campbell. 
Campbell up on the line again, breaking a gap. I see outside of his James Lillaway. Will they catch him? No! Right under the post. Good try. Early blood for the Kiwis. And James, James Lillaway scores his fourth try in as many tests. That's an unbelievable record for the New Zealand midfield. Let's have a look at it again. Shane Varley flicked it out. Kimball made the initial gap, ran it up, flicked it outside him to James Lulaway, and Lulaway once again the finisher. Twelve and a half minutes gone, the Kiwis lead, four to nil. This is really the first time New Zealand's had the ball in the, an attacking opportunity and they just showed what skills they've got. under 15 minutes gone having a look at it again from the end on replay Gary Campbell it was that made the initial break and set it up Lulawai through the gap as always in the right place at the right time and straight underneath the post how many times have we said it of James Lulawai that he is in the right place at the right time his positional play is just superb oh, magnificent. the way he put himself between the two Great Britain players they had no chance in the world of catching him Owen Wright, Kurt Sorensen. Barley, flicks it on to Kemble. Kemble proving very, very effective in this line today. The crowd right behind this Kiwi side when they're attacking. Dane Sorensen. Olsen for the final. Once again, bumps off the first tackler. Caught in the second. Little chip through from Owen Wright. Good tackle. Owen Wright, as he did in the first, he's up, he's up there to get that ball and make the first tackle. really sticking to the same tactics or starting to revert to the same tactics of running it up the middle perhaps they still think it's their most effective way McAdams out wider bad pass yes, there's no great penetration around the play of the balls or even out one and two wide they're running quite aimlessly just hoping someone makes a gap Keith Mumby trying to run onto that ball but it was well short of him Hardly a classic feat of the scrum. Shane Varley said last week that he tried initially to feed the scrum very fairly, but when he saw that Neil Holding, the Great Britain for, uh, halfback, was getting away with illegal feats, he started to do the same, and the scrums evened up toward the end of the match. Initially, Great Britain had a good lead in scrums. Kiwi tackling still pretty sure. Good way. Looking for space to move. Right out wide to Mumby. He's crunched. Oh, good gap made. Nicely done. The little pass outside. Drummond out there. Is he going to get to the line? Hanley trying to finish it. It's very close. About one metre from the line. Great Britain with a real chance here. Adams flicks it out wide. 
Nice little pass up under from Leiden. Oh, good tackling. Once again, it's Gary Campbell. Campbell and Hume again. Good, safe, last-minute tackling. Magnificent. Gary Campbell's carrying on when he left in Auckland last week. He's playing a superb game. That was a, a try-saving tackle if ever there was one. Tony Myler, who's injured. That's an injury they can ill afford. That's an injury, really, that he's carried throughout the, the tour. They won't stop for him. Kiwi ball, Shane Varley. Dean Bell waiting. Bell, held by Adams. Sirens. Tony Myler is going to get up and keep playing again, but one can't help thinking that's a weakness, particularly at standoff. Drummond. Dane O'Hara assisted by Fred Arcoy in the tackle. Burke. They're not getting any room to move at all, Great Britain. Certainly they have looked more enterprising in this match than they had last week. Close to, to scoring on a couple of occasions now. It's a better back play picked up by Dean Bell. Very quick to lose ball. McGann. Good bend. Sorensen. Kiwis working their way back up again. After that pressure from Great Britain, it's taken them very little time. Oh, nicely held Kurt Sorensen. Beautifully done. And flicked outside to Dane O'Hara. Can't make the line, but Kurt Sorensen showing his ball skills again. Beautifully held in the tackle. Well, Sorensen took that ball off Kevin Tamley then. It, was, uh, it could have been anyone's ball, but he, he contested. He took it. He made the half break for Hari, nearly scored in the corner. Same story again, Mike O'Donnell, the Great Britain side, make heavy work of their six tackles and don't make a lot of ground. The Kiwis seem to be enterprising every time they get possession. Oh, I think there's far more confidence in this Kiwi team as opposed to the Great Britain side. Bali, Alson Filipina. Bali. Fred Arcoy putting it up to Hume again. The tackle was high, they're going to get the penalty. Let's have a look again at the tackle on Hugh McGann. There's Arcoy, flicks it up to McGann and the tackle, no question about that. That's a coat hanger. Luckily, Hugh McGann, one of the more skillful ball players in the Kiwi side, very, very fast back row man, is uninjured. I'm sure he'll have been shaken up, but no question it was illegal. And a chance now for Olsen Filipina to put further points on the board. Another nail in the coffin of Great Britain. A silly tackle. Gave the Kiwis a penalty. New Zealand leading Great Britain 8 to nil with 15 minutes gone in the first half. Yes, New Zealand has shown far more commitment than the Great Britain side, especially on defences, two and three in a tackle, and the Great Britain people are going backwards. But when New Zealand players have the ball, they're taking two or three forward. There's not that same commitment there. Kiwis making yardage every time. Bali. Bell. Kevin Tomity. Still going. Oh, what a great bend to Hume again. Great bend from Kevin Tomity offloading after the second attempted tackle. And they're still going wide. Kurt Sorensen. A confident Kiwi side with their tails up. Dane Sorensen. Bali. Olsen Filipina, a little double round, and 
through the middle. Hume again's up there. Looking all the way like a try for the Kiwis. Bali, the kick. Filipina's up there. Good tackle. Another, another superb kick from Bali. Just put it far enough. Well, they had to take it back. It's another drop out under the post. New Zealand retained possession, attacking position. And Andy Goodway back there to save the day for Great Britain. Actually, Kevin Tampany showing amazing speed today, isn't he? He's getting through there like a, a loose forward or an inside back. Kevin Tampany is having a superb game so far. Really looking good on the burst. Kemble. Pass out wide. James Lillaway. Dane Sorensen. Kevin Tumity. Still looking to offload the ball, but Noble's tackle was good. Philippine up. Hume again playing a big part in this game, as is Owen Wright. Filipina out there. Dane O'Hara, nowhere to go. Good kick. Oh, once again, pressure for Great Britain. Same tactics as the first test. When they get up that close, put them under pressure. Mick Burke is very safe, but one or two of the other Great Britain backs are not quite as safe under that high ball. That was, a, that was a good kick for Mark Coy. He just put it right on the spot. For the Great Britain time, they never put any pressure on him as he made the kick. He had all the time in the world. Kimball. Brilliant take, Kimball. Kevin Tumbley. Oh, playing like a man inspired today is Kevin Tumbley. Dane Sorensen. Offloading to his brother. Kurt Sorensen comes back to Kevin Tumity. Tumity takes the tackle. Howie Tumity waits. Dane Sorensen. Harley putting it out wide. Olsen Filipina. Hume again. Owen Wright. The combination between Hugh McGann and Owen Wright has been superb today. We'll explain in a minute why it is so good. Fred Arcoy outside to Olsen Filipino, who gets the pass back. Kurt Sorensen still live. Dane Sorensen with a kick. Good tactics. And Dean Bell up there to pressure them again. Joe Light saves it for Great Britain. Now the, the referees rule the bells offside. It's a penalty to Great Britain relieve a little bit of pressure. Boots to three metres from their goal line. But every one of these New Zealand players put the ball there, Tony. That uh, They've got amazing accuracy with the ball. With it. Dane Sorensen. That was a good kick. Dean Bell wasn't that far offside, but he was offside and a judge so by the referee. Lighten there for Great Britain to save it. The reason why Hugh McGann and Owen Wright combine so well is that they play together for Otohuhu in Auckland. They also play in New Zealand Maoris and Auckland together. They are a superb combination. Brian Case. Yes, he's looking for runners there, but there's no one coming through. Seems to be really the story of this Great Britain tour is that the individual brilliance of one or two players is not supported by the rest of the team. Howie Tamati tidies up for the Kiwis. New Zealand in possession. James Lulawai. Proving tricky as ever. Dane Sorensen. Filipina. And they've assigned two men to him today. Sometimes three. Kevin Tamati and Kurt Sorensen on the burst. Nicely up to Shane Varley. Varley back to Fred Arcoy. Arcoy with a little chip through. He was shepherded. 
No, the referee was right on the spot there. He uh, he wasn't under that opinion. I think uh, Coy might have played a little bit there. I, it was a fair fair ruling. Let's have a look at, at it 22. again. It certainly looked as though Fred Arcoy was shepherded as he went through. The chip through. And Drummond and Hanley appeared to interfere with him, but the referee was on the spot. He's the judge. New Zealand backline are looking remarkably schooled under these conditions, Tony, aren't they? Imagine what it'd be like on a hard and fast track. Oh, yeah. Oh, good little break. Andy Goodway. Good running. Who's there to pick it up? Hanley's inside him. Can they get a try from there? Hanley in a flying tackle from Dane O'Hara. Holds him up. Oh. Holding the ball up. The referee signals that's the case. Magnificent tackle from O'Hara. Well, you've seen try-saving tackles before. There's one right out of the book from Dane O'Hara. That was a certain try to Hanley. He's one of the strongest men in this Great Britain side, and uh, O'Hara kept, kept the ball off the ground. Superb tackle. Little White. But it does show you this great Britain side. They have the indi individual stars to come through and, and make breaks and score tries. Filipina. Playing it himself. Filipina making good ground. Campbell. Once again, between Burke and the winger. In this case, it's Joe Lydon. Burke running it up. Good tackle, Dean Bell. Bell again. Hanley. Case can't hold it. Didn't go forward, though. Owen Wright, the tackle. Very sloppy play by Great Britain. They lost 10 metres in that movement then. So right up on the Great Britain 22. Gregory. Yeah, that was not A little bit unnecessary. On Howie Tamady. Totally unnecessary. Straight. But he's penalised Tamady. So the referee's obviously seen a different way. Well, I'm sure Barry Barnes is not going to come out of this game with the same lack of criticism as Kevin Roberts had last week. I'm sure there will be people who will disagree with one or two of his decisions. Great Britain with a chance to do something again. 30 metres out. running from Great Britain, far more commitment and the way they're running it up now, they're not flicking it around as much as the Kiwis, but at least they're attempting such nicely picked up, they're going to lose it Owen Wright comes up with the ball they're running Dean Bell, given a couple of inches to move, Dean Bell is pretty dangerous slips two tackles, fourth and the third Walked by Andy Goodway Akoi, forward, forward. What a superb game Dean Bell is having again. He has to use that sideline beautifully. He's only one or two inches in, but he must have used it for 20 or 30 metres. 22 years old from the Maluko Club in Auckland. Has played for Carlisle and Leeds, playing his fifth test today. Ellery Hanley, away with a break. They can't stop him. Chasing after him is Dane O'Hara once again. Can he say the day? Not this time. A try for Great Britain, Ellery Hadley. Much more effective in the centres today than he was on the wing. Yes, that's show the individual flair of Hadley. I thought he was a little bit faster than that because O'Hara made ground on him, but he swerved away at the last minute and he just had enough legs. Having a look at it again with a good break made for Hadley. Put him in a gap. Hugh McGann tried to angle tap him, couldn't quite get there. 
Dane O'Hara showing a burst of speed, but Ellery Hanley just managing to evade him. And Dane O'Hara couldn't pull off the same try saving tackle twice in a row. Ellery Hanley, the man of the moment, 23 year old from Bradford Northern. He's had eight tries, that's nine on tour now. He normally plays at standoff or centre, but he has been playing on the wing in this tour. So Mick Burke with a chance to make it six. Actually, Burke, the goalkeeper, he was a guy that set the try up. He came in the back line and gave the, he gave the overlap to Henry. And Burke is there. Eight to six. Yes, we can see here that Burke comes in the line, commits his man, and Hanley has enough room and time. And he just outpaces the hard of the line. Very elusive running from Ellery Hanley. Nicely done. Stane O'Hara coming down on him at a great rate of knots. And so now the margin is two points. 22 minutes gone in the game. So far, the penalties, they favour Great Britain 4-3. And the scrums favour New Zealand three to one, and there's been four mistakes, handling mistakes by either side. I notice the touch judge on the broadcast side of the field is Tony Drake from here in Canterbury, who refereed the third test between Great Britain and Australia. It was roundly criticised. Gary Campbell. Yes, Campbell brought that ball nearly back to the 22. The Great Britain side haven't really put enough pressure on him enough to put it deep. Dane Sorensen. Kiwis now needing to be fired up. Put that margin up again. Kevin Tomady. Certainly a much better Great Britain side than uh, we've seen for a little while. Kurt Sorensen. Getting the pass right out wide to Dean Bell. Bell well held by Light. Kurt Sorensen. Yes, this has fired the Kiwis up. They're really running with vigour now. Shane Barley with the little kick. Kilaway <laughs> has the ball, flicks it up. The referee says come back. Well, we'll wait and see how the game develops, but uh, thus far, Barry Barnes certainly hasn't let play flow as well as Kevin Roberts did. No, he's, he's been more involved in the game. Some of his decisions were found a little bit hard to understand, but uh, there's obviously been reasons for them. Andy Gregory out very quickly, Hugh McGann the tackler. Great Britain inside their 22, trying to run it out. That's the 22 line. Case. Oh, ball handling error. They regain it, but it went forward. Tony Myler still limping. Great Britain standoff, number six. Yes, he doesn't look at all well at all. I don't think he'll last much longer on the field. I see him sitting to the sideline before. They have John Joyner as the back replacement who can play anywhere in the back line. It's understood that Myler has been playing most of his games with uh, some form of injection in his knee. Painkillers before and quarter zone afterwards, I gather. Yes. Filipino. Haven't seen a great deal of Filipino today. They've wrapped him up well. Akoi. Bali. Hume again. Bali to Bell. Dane Sirens. A very silly mistake by the Great Britain side. About 10 or 15 metres to the lip to the left of the upright and a reasonably easy chance for Filipina. Certainly it is well within Nelson Filipina's kicking range. Even with a wet ball like today, he can land them from further away than that. 
so a chance now to make that gap four instead of two away so the gap is still two points seven minutes remaining in the first half one could forgive Olsen Filipina for missing with the ball as slippery as it is today but certainly it's within his range Kimball Tomati Sorensen Tomati Owen Wright Tamati Farley <laughs> Hasn't taken them very long to wake up to uh, Kevin Tamati's form of today Yes, he's having a fine game He's taken two and three on the tackle He's hurting them when they do catch him Kurt Sorensen nicely picked up that ball Hume again outside him, Dean Bell Dean Bell pushed out over the line Kurt Sorensen's playing out wide a lot today and he's being very effective when he comes in. Yes, he, he, he's got that ability to delay the pass. He commits the man, but commits the opposition, but gives his man a little a half gap and they're through. Bell was nearly in the corner then. Get him up, no! Get him up, get him up, no! Great Britain once again in a defensive role trying to run it out but not making a lot of yardage. Getting the pass up nicely to Gregory. Held by McGann. Kick through. Held by Dean Bell beautifully. Ineffectual kick. Kevin Tomity waiting. Right again, Fred Arcoy. Who's he got outside of Fred Arcoy? Almost through a gap. Dane Sorensen. Backing into the tackle. Right up now inside Great Britain's 22. Bali. Bali. <laughs> trying to dip inside himself. He's such a tiny man. It amazes me that he can continue to play at this level of football. Kurt Sorensen. Dean Bell, looking to get the pass away, no one there, holds the ball, last tackle, the kick going up this time, Arcoy, and Hume again comes up with it, Fred Arcoy will finish, nice try, once again it's the centres, James Lulawai and Fred Arcoy scoring the tries for the Kiwis. 12 points to 6 with a chance to make it 14 to 6. And still four minutes play remaining in the first half. Yes, that's the first time in the in the two matches. Here we go. The ball from Howie Tamati. Arcoy puts it high in the air. It's a beautiful, a beautiful bomb. I thought that kick was going to be short. Hugh McGann, as ever, in the right place at the right time. Flicks it up to Fred Arcoy. All he had to do was run a couple of paces and put it over the line. Yes, that little bit of height, those two six foot three, six foot four guys, New Zealand's second row. They contested that ball and they got it down now side and New Zealand's side. Yes, the flags are up. 14 to 6. With a couple of minutes remaining in the first half. New Zealand leading Great Britain. Look at it again. The bomb from Fred Arcoy. It looked like it might have been short. Mick Adams running up to get underneath it. Normally very safe. Flicked back by Owen Wright to Hugh McGann. McGann flicks it up to Fred Arcoy. And Arcoy with a couple of metres to go to get over the line. And once again, the combination between Owen Wright and Hugh McGann proving its worth. Just a little tap back. Yes, as soon as that ball is up in the air, those two are up there. With their added height, they've got an advantage over the Great Britain side. They're both six feet three. Wright's 15 stone, McGann is 14 stone, but because they play together in club football, provincial football, inter-districts football and New Zealand Māoris, their combination together is superb. 
Kevin Tarmody bustling his way up. Sorensen. Filipina. Bali with the kick. Very good kick too. Right over Des Drummond's head. Yes, well, can New Zealand try anything now? We've got about one one minute to half time. But I think it's, it's a great Britain's born of the scrum. They'll probably hook it. Half time, Uta is gone. That is half time. So the Kiwis with a good lead at half time, 14 to 6. And once again, looking the better side when Great Britain have to run it out, even when they have been on attack. That man, Dane O'Hara, saved one certain try by keeping the ball up in the air and getting underneath the man he tackled to keep the ball off the yeah. ground. But the Kiwis certainly looking better and making more yardage when they're going forward. They look more enterprising every time they get the ball. Yes, their backs are playing as if it's a dry ground. And when the Great Britain side has the ball, their defence is absolutely phenomenal because the commitment they've got on the tackles, they've got three, four onto a tackle and they're going backwards and they're feeling the tackles. And most of the times, the Great Britain players don't really want to run with the ball. Graham so. Lowe going into the dressing room there. I'm sure he'll be quite happy with the performance so far. Some very early ball handling errors but not a lot to complain about in the kiwi camp let's go back to the studio now we'll be back shortly with the second half meantime some comments from peter williams and colin o'neill peter welcome back to haddington showgrounds here in christchurch where the rain is holding off hopefully for the second half and the kiwis leading 14 to 6 and certainly looking the better side certainly looking more adventurous when they do anything their support play has been superb Good fast forwards backing each other up well. Yes, their tackle count makes an interesting reading too, Tony. Um, the top tackle count for the New Zealand side is Dane Sorensen with 13, but the last in the forward pack is uh, is Arn Wright with nine, but they all range between nine and 13, so it's a, they're all doing their own job out there. Kurt Sorensen and Dane Sorensen once again proving invaluable. Bali, Filipina, New Jersey's after half time, but they won't stay clean for long. Kevin Tarmody. Oh, right, still managing to offload. Dane Sorensen. Sorensen slips two, eventually caught by Case and Gregory. Yes, Dane Sorens have another strong game today, Tony, isn't he? Carrying on from last week. Excellent game. Bali. Akoi. Little I was up there to Mark Hadley. Drummond. There's Drummond complaining there that little I was offside didn't get any joy from the referee Chris Burton Burton and Goodway the second rowers for Great Britain once again the workhorses as they were last week it's a good kick Mick Burke a good kick 25 year old from witness who played internationals in rugby union for England under 21s one try and 19 goals so far on the tour he's actually been offered a, uh, a contract to go and play gridiron in the United States the kicker only not surprising since he holds points records goals 140 and points 316 that was back in 1979-80 Yes, that was another scrum to New Zealand, and they're leading the scrums 5-3 at this stage. The penalties are 4 all. Owen Wright, flicking it back to Kurt Sorensen. Are we Tamari waiting? 
nicely offloaded by Kevin somebody. Hugh McGann getting it forced back in the tackle. Owen Wright, Kurt Sorensen, Dane O'Hara going back inside. Got right. held by Hadley. Great Britain tacklers aren't stopping that ball. Dane Sorensen. Howie Tamati stepping into position to play dummy half. Kevin Tamati. Oh, nicely offloaded. Howie Tamati couldn't pick it up from cousin Kevin. Bad, a bad mistake there, a knock-on, obviously, or something similar. Didn't quite catch what it was, but uh, it was a bad mistake. It was only the first tackle on Great Britain. scrum right by the halfway line in the middle of the field Filipina trying a little move there for Gary Campbell to come in Filipina once again three tacklers Tamati Sorensen a barging run has the highest tackle count in the first half, does Dane Sorensen. Kurt Sorensen. Wide pass. Kevin Tamati. Tamati offloading. Fred Arkoy. Arkoy. Villapiner in there. Hugh McGann. And outside of his little way. And Dean Bell to finish it. A magnificent try for these conditions. What a superb try on any ground, let alone a wet and soggy one like this to take New Zealand to 18 to 6. Dean Bell with some reward now for the amazing amount of toil he put in in the first half. Fred Arcoy set it up. Olsen Filipina managing to get the pass back. Hugh McGann outside him. Then it goes to Lulawai. Lulawai sees Dean Bell ranging up there. Bell takes the pass and over the line. Right in the corner. But it, it all started from the Great Britain side. They make the tackle, but they're not stopping the ball. Well, the young Manuko centre playing on the wing today, Dean Bell, a man of the future in New Zealand Rugby League, certainly has toiled so hard on that wing and protected his sideline so well. That is some small reward for him. Number 14 about to come on for Great Britain is John Joyner. Kick from Olsen Filipina. Just sneaking below the bar, a little to the left. Let's have another look at how this try was set up. Kurt Sorensen with that big long pass. Kevin Tamati. Tamati puts it back. Again, another long pass. Fred Arkoy found a little gap, stepped inside Gregory. Filipina managed to get it up as he was going down. A little way to Dean Bell. Number 11, Chris Burton, is coming off. Now, that's going to be a blow for Great Britain. He has been one of their more effective forwards. John Joyner coming on. Joyner can play anywhere in the back line or second row in the forwards. He's also played loose forward. He's 29, comes from Castleford, has played 14 tests, and he made his debut way back in 1978 against Australia, so he's no newcomer to test football. Big deep kick back. Drummond to Hanley. Owen Wright puts Hanley on the ground. It's quite surprising that Joyner has got on because the reserve forward is Bearsmore. And they're obviously trying to get a bit more attack in there, but bringing them back into the forwards. the features of the Kiwis play both last week and this week is the well taken balls from kicks Gary Campbell, Dane O'Hara Dean Bell have all been superb Kurt Sorensen with a bustling run Tamati to Dane Sorensen 
Nathan Sorensen again assigned the role of taking the ball up and he's doing it well. Kevin Tamati. Owen no Wright managing to get it back. Ball still live. No. The referee obviously called a held and tackle to be ball to be played but that's why he's penalizing New Zealand man playing after it certainly held. looked as though he was held yes it did too a bad mistake there the ball never found a touch Kim was bringing it back Bell. he's fired up today as Dean Bell Tamati through Varley to Dane Sorensen again. Tamati. Philip Beinart busting three tackles and still getting the pass up. They couldn't hold it. Loose ball. Philip Beinart dives on it. Superb centre combination, Fred Arcoy and James Lulloy. Olsen Philippine are up there very quick for... Yes, and the referee Daniel. is obviously a little bit too quick because he, yeah. he was offside. Just a little jump ahead, perhaps a little too keen. And Mick Burke with the kick. But at 18 points to 6, Tony, it's going to be very hard for Great Britain to come back under these conditions and the, and the way the New Zealand side's playing. Frank Myler, British coach, and the uncle of standoff Tony Myler, doing a lot of talking when they're on this side of the paddock. Good way. Between Midway and 22 in Kiwis territory. Loose ball again. Hanley. Hadley hasn't been involved so much today as he was in Auckland or in the Australian Test either. Although he has scored a fine try, he has not been involved in most of the general play. But he seems to have been more effective when he has been in play at centre than on the wing. Yes, well, he's obviously should have more to do in there, shouldn't he? A crunching tackle by the New Zealand players there. On little Andy Gregory. Starting to manage to offload the ball in the tackles now, Great Britain chip up there from Keith Mumby. Joe Lydon trying to run it out, still going. Actually, Lydon hasn't been in the game at all. He would hardly have to change his jersey at halftime. Finally tackled by Olsen Filipina convincingly. Hanley. As you said, Mike, Hanley hasn't done all that much, but certainly he has been dangerous when he's got the ball. get the kick away Campbell under it safely again with this Kiwi side now it's almost a case of not even worrying when a bomb goes up because Gary Campbell has inspired so much confidence he's had good cover from Dean Bell and Dane O'Hara but he really does inspire confidence in the back line he's been so safe back there to Sorensen to Kurt Sorensen Campbell with a kick again putting it not right to Mick Burke but between Burke and a winger worked to great effect in the first test and Sorensen the tackler Ah, 
Harvey. Once again in the Kiwi half. Ball going loose, picked up by Varley. Kiwis in possession again. Now let's have a look at the comparison with what the Kiwis will do with six tackles and what Great Britain have done in terms of yardage. Dean Bell. That's the first one. Kurt Sorensen, Dan O'Hara manages to collect the ball again but Ellery Hanley bumps him unceremoniously into touch East New Zealand look well on the way to their first home series win over Great Britain since 1962 that'll be a fine achievement if they do it 12 minutes gone in the second half, New Zealand leading 18 to 6. Differential penalty arising from the scrum. Burke will kick for the line. So Great Britain again up inside, just approaching the 22 metre line in Kiwis territory. Can they make something out of their six tackles? Play on, says the referee. Looked like it went forward. Good pass. Eventually the ball going out. Leiden couldn't do anything with it out there. He hasn't had the most brilliant game in the world, Joe Lydon, so far. Not all of it his fault. It's the Great Britain side, the backs are meant to be the strength of the side, but they're not using them hardly at all. Shane Barley. Joe Lydon was the man who made the difference between Widnes and Wigan when Widnes beat Wigan in the Challenge Cup final at Wembley. He scored two runaway tries. And he's been put in this side, very obviously, to give them some more attacking penetration. Campbell. Burke safe. Dane Sorensen still keeping his tackle count very high, as are all the Kiwi forwards. They haven't really been found lacking at all. Kiwis in their defence. distinct lack of direction there it's unbelievable professional players like these guys are they're just uh, not knowing who to throw the ball to Ellery Hanley Hanley starting to limp Hugh McGann underneath the high ball well keeps possession for the Kiwis Sorensen. Dean Bell in the game again. The Kiwi side has just gone off the boil slightly. Marley keeping going. Hugh McGann in a gap nicely outside him. Fred Arcoy. Luluai was ranging up outside Arcoy. Right down to the other side now. Right. Gary Campbell comes streaking up inside him. Yes, that's the first turnover I think we've had on the match. New Zealand had played their six tackles and uh, 
therefore they had to give it over to the opposing side. While in most cases a turnover, reaching the sixth tackle and having to give possession to the other side is unforgivable in test football, in this circumstance the Kiwis are probably gaining from it. Olsen Filipina, Filipina still going, trying to get that pass away, Yuma Gamwe was up beside him, they're going to try and run it in now the Kiwis, Kurt Sorensen gets the pass out, Farley fumbling but manages to regain it, 10 metres out now the Kiwis, Howie Tamati, Kevin Tamati waiting, Pass back to Kurt Sorensen. See Kurt Sorensen still looking to get that pass away. That's one of the few times he probably hasn't got the ball away in a tackle today. Kevin Tamati, uh, Olsen Filipina. Coming wide now. James Lulaway outside of his Dana O'Hara. Couldn't be simpler. Beautifully set up after a flying pressure for three or four minutes. Just when we said this Kiwi side looked as though they were going off the boil, in fact the game was going off the boil, and the Kiwis once again put sustained pressure on Great Britain's line and it pays off. Beautifully done. Kurt Sorensen, wide out to Kevin Tamati, James Lulaway, Dane O'Hara. It's amazing for, you know, for the conditions they are, the way they are today. Both wings have scored tries in both centres. The balls come out wide. They know how to apply pressure in the middle and thus make it a little thinner on the outsides and then flick the ball wide and take advantage of it. Yes, the Great Britain side really haven't even tried to get the ball out wide and they, uh, they don't look like they've, they've got the ability to do that, actually. Well, Dane O'Hara really didn't have a memorable first test in the first half anyway. The smile on his face tells all. Yes, he's been far more involved today, Tony, than he was last week and uh, I'm sure... I'm sure he feels a lot better. Flagged away for Olsen Filipino. I don't think it'll make a lot of difference in the final analysis. Let's look at the try again. Applying pressure in the middle and leaving the outsides just a little thin in defence. Kiwis capitalising so quickly. Olsen Filipino getting the ball out. Dane Sorensen flicks it to Kurt. Kurt to Kevin Tamati. James Lulaway and Dane O'Hara. Dane O'Hara, the try scorer, the 29-year-old, plays for Hull now. Used to play for Glenora in Auckland. Scored the most tries in the 82 season. He's played 21 tests. This is his 22nd. Made his debut way back in 77. The Kiwis all fired up now, playing with great confidence. Gregory, I think, is injured, the Great Britain halfback. Either his ankle or his knee. Arcoy. Oh, lovely pass from Arcoy. Beautifully done to Wilson Filipina. Hugh McGann up there. What a superb pass. The pass from all over that pass was magnificent. Campbell managing to get the kick in before the tackle. Burke not top, sure what to do, thinking it was going to roll over the line. He's been tackled in touch. It's Fred Arcoy showed great skills. He popped that ball up. He's committed the tackle, and Filipino can burst him through onto it. If he goes through here, and he, oh, he pops it up magnificently, Fred Arcoy does. Filipino in the gap and finished from there very nicely. Howie Tamati. Kurt Sorensen. Bouncing off the tackle. Losing the ball. Dean Bell trying to go through and pick it up. Hugh McGann does so. Come back for the whistle.
22 points to six. Gregory, he looked injured just a few moments ago, made a quick recovery. Once again, really a lack of direction in this Great Britain side. Even when they have a chance to set something up, they really don't know what to do. They're not handling the conditions well at all. Dean Bell. Howie Tamati. Dane Sorensen. Kevin Tamati. Good pass up, picked up by Kurt Sorensen. Well, we've spoken a lot about the combinations in this side. The combination between Owen Wright and Hugh McGann is one that's well known. But one of the combinations that has really worked in this side is that between Kevin Tumerty today and Kurt Sorensen. Oh, yes, the, the, the front two have been magnificent. And I think they're probably the reason why we're scoring our tries out wide. They're committing the Great, the great Britain players in the middle of the field. They're taking two and three into a tackle. Bruising, uncompromising stuff. And uh, they've really played well, both of them out wide this time Great Britain but not making a lot of headway Leiden coming back in still picking the ball back Leiden picks it up not going anywhere forward the Great Britain side is showing a, a distinct lack of interest in the game now they've lost all their confidence in a no-win situation uh, Brian Noble it is the Great Britain captain I think he was gone off 15 on there is Kevin Beardmore from Castleford, the 23-year-old, who's a hooker, the number two choice hooker. And Brian Noble, number nine, the Great Britain captain, has gone off. We're not sure what the injury is. There is Brian Noble. Kimball once again to tidy up, running it back in. Dane Sorensen. Not back five metres. Yes, great button side offside again. They're not really showing a lot of interest to get back in New Zealand half and score tries. The odd individual's making a break, but there's no backing up. There's no combinations working that great, but it's not at all, Tony. 27 minutes gone in the second half, and the Kiwis leading 22 to 6 over Great Britain. Once again, the wall being used. Who comes out for the ball? It's a bit of a raffle. Filipana comes through there. He was the, he was the runner. Kevin Tarman. It's the notable combinations today. The centres, James Lulawai and Fred Arcoy. The props, Kevin Tumerty and, Kurt and uh, Dane Sorensen. And Hugh McGann and Owen Wright. Kurt Sorensen. Tumerty waiting. Shane Barley changing it. Hugh McGann. Held, but gets the tackle away. Dean Bell. Dean Bell. Bell still offloading it. So the turnover. Great Britain to run it out from inside their own 22. Kick. 
Back in the Kiwis half now. Lillaway. Lillaway away. Beautiful running, James Lillaway. Try to offload it. Chan Shea Varley picks it up. Good way tackles him. Dane. Kevin Tumity it was, looked like Dane Sorensen. Dean Bell. Dean Bell. Lovely running, Dean Bell. Can't match up inside him. Great Britain in possession. Good tackle on Drummond. Dean, every time Dean Bell gets the, the ball, he's making ground. He's a, he's a very aggressive, strong runner. Kevin Tumley was the tackler on that occasion. Stopped there as Drummond did. Case having a big game. Hanley. Oh, and right up there trying to get the intercept. Liam Moore running it round, the replacement. This is Burke. Good tackle from Fred Arcoy. They're giving them no room to move at all. Burke tackled by Kurt Sorensen and Dean Bell. Light. Little chip through. Kimball's up there, safe as ever. Juggling it, but still comes down with the ball. Adams up on him very quick. Again. Kevin Tomity. the kicker Burke put it straight back again and he find the line this time Campbell going back ambling back picks it up and he'll run it in again no he's gonna kick a little bit of a kicking duel going on here between Burke and Gary Campbell yes well New Zealand can do it all day they got the points on the board so it's to their advantage to do it Great Britain want to kick it back, but they won't score tries that way. Good tackle from Filipina. Here's Drummond. Drummond running it himself. Really, a lot of the sparkle has gone out of this game, and it seems to go out of it when Great Britain are in possession. Hugh McGann out there wide. Dean Bell once again, good tackle, but still getting the pass away, Adams. Campbell. Kiwi's in possession now. He's little way knocked the ball on, he's just picking it up from that play of the ball. So Great Britain feed on the 22. So this is probably the best attacking position they've been in for quite a while. If they hook the ball. The Kiwis leading Great Britain, 22 points to six. Great Britain on attack, one of the few times in the match. Burke. Burke offloading it. Well, a fairly simple try. Shane Varley came round and tackled Burke. It's David Hobbs, is it? No, Tony Myler, who scored the try for Great Britain. Tony Myler nursing an injured knee. Let's have a look at it again. Came back round the other way. That's Burke. Shane Varley tackled him didn't wrap him up well enough Myler running off him 
try to Great Britain. It's a surprising try. I think it put everyone unaware. Even, even we've found it up in this position that uh, didn't realise it was a try. But this only time Great Britain has been attacked in the last 20 minutes, and, and they've scored a try. So this game's still open, but I don't think they can come back. It's 22-10 with a kick to come. Hopefully that try will have given them the confidence to try some more adventurous football. But they really have looked dull when in possession. Yes, they, they really have. That was uh, Burke come in and he just had too much bulk for Valley then popped the ball up to Myler coming through. So Mick Burke with a chance to put the extra two on the board for Great Britain to narrow that gap. That's a good kick. 22 to 12. Eight minutes remaining in the game. Let's have a look at the replay again. Shane Varley made the tackle, but he just couldn't wrap him up. Couldn't wrap up Burke well enough. And Myler just running outside him. And what Myler is complaining about is that Dane O'Hara coming through stepped on his sore knee. The replacement for New Zealand is Ricky Cowan, number 15. And I think Clayton Friend is on there as well. We'll have a look and see who's come off. But both New Zealand replacements are on the paddock. Number 14, Ricky Cowan making his test debut. Six feet two and 16 stone. Just 20 years old. It looks like Howie Tamadi has gone off. That's who Cowan's replaced. And Clayton and Friend is Howie Tamadi and Shane Varley, the two men who've come off. Both have toiled very well in this match. Both are still sitting there expectantly. Little away. Clayton Friend, a 22-year-old from Maluko. Is the reserve back five feet six and ten stone seven the same size as Shane Varley and Ricky Cowan the big new forward yes this is Ricky Cowan's test taboo today at 20 years of age and what a future he's got number 15 for the Kiwis deep kick from Burke over O'Hara's head O'Hara's gonna run it back up Case testing the ball. Count waiting. Tabadi. Sorensen. McGann. Count running onto it. Fresh player losing the ball in the tackle. Perhaps a case of first test nerves for Ricky Count. He had a superb trial that really played him into the reserve berth for this Kiwi side. Must have a big future. Six feet two and 16 stone as a prop and very, very fast. We just heard that the official player of the day is Dane Sorensen. Kiwi prop. Yes, that's a good choice, but it must have been pretty close between him and uh, Kevin Tamady on today's performance. Be hard to pick. For the final. Standing there with so much time. Takes a lot of footing down. Gareth Sorensen puts it up to James Lillowai. Lillowai back to Sorensen. Well, there's no shortage of fire in this Kiwi pack. Sent off, I believe. He's been sent off. Oh, we'll have to have a look at it again. Andy Gregory has been sent off. 22-year-old witness halfback. A little He's a rugged little player. Let's have a look at it again. I think you have to watch his feet. I think he gets his feet round Kurt Sorensen's head. Yes, that's where it is. You can see it there, putting it put in Ellery Hanley was lucky not to be sent off too for the elbow that went in first but certainly that was a combined effort at softening, softening up Kurt Sorensen 
And Andy Gregory, immediately prior to being sent off, was named British Player of the Day. The overall player of the day, of course, Kurt Sorensen for the Kiwis. They're running from the Kiwi side. Kevin Tuppany, nice pass in front. Oh, beautiful try. Beautiful try. Dana O'Hara going right around out of the post to finish it. What a superb pass. That all started from that sit on the replay coming up and watching the pass from Kevin Tamity. Have a look at this again. What a lovely pass. Clayton Friend flicks it out. Oh, and right in the line. This is Kevin Tamity. Have a look at this pass in front of Ellery Hanley to Luluai. Luluai safe. Saw O'Hara outside him. O'Hara only had to run for the line unmarked and he went right round between the posts to dot it down and make it easier for Olsen Filipina to convert. A try made by Kevin Tamadi's pass. And already half of the crowd starting to leave with a couple of minutes remaining on the board. 28 to 12. The Kiwis really trouncing Great Britain considering the conditions. Look at it again. Kevin Tamadi's pass in front of Hanley's. What made it? Lulawai flicks it up to Dane O'Hara. O'Hara goes round onto the post to finish. Yes. Good try. Superb team of team effort from New Zealand Tony. they've been superior backs and forwards just a class above this English players aren't they definitely in a superior class today the English players have not handled the conditions well time ticking away on this official board now with the Kiwis in a big lead 28 to 12 Dan Sorensen pulling it back again after losing it forward in the tackle, but the referee has ruled that it went forward. Andy Goodway with a knee in Dane Sorensen's face. Dane Sorensen has something to say about that. Seems Ricky Coward has come into the game just at the time when it's starting to get a little niggly. The hallmark of this test and the first test was that there was no dirt at all, really. Very clean games. I think the Englishman, the Great Britain side, really starting to get frustrated. Here we now. go now. Look, it's all on. Well, perhaps we spoke too soon. I think the frustration just starting to set in. Yes, this is Great Britain side, they know they've lost everything. They've lost both series, Australia and New Zealand, and uh, they're frustrated, just getting away on them a little bit. Hugh McGann playing the peacemaker role. But I think that both Sorensons have had just cause to retaliate in the last 10 minutes or so. Yes, especially Dane Sorensen. The game is over. Whether or not the time was up, the hooter hasn't gone, but the crowd has run on the pitch, and referee Barry Barnes has said that is the end. So the Kiwis have beaten Great Britain 28 to 12 in the second test at the Addington Showgrounds here in Christchurch. What a superb team effort. Once again, Great Britain started very strong in the first 10 minutes and looked as though they could score tries. But once that Kiwi dominance, particularly in the fast forwards, took over, the Great Britain side lost heart and seemed to lose interest in the last 20 minutes or so. What a superb series of combinations with this Kiwi side. Graham Lowe can take credit for the tactics that they have played in both tests to win the series. And I'm sure a lot of the players are going to have big smiles on their faces as they go in under the stand to the dressing rooms. Superb team effort. Oh, magnificent, Tony. The ball skills of our forwards have to be seen to be believed, and we've seen them here today. And with, with the wet ball, they've, to, they've kept it up, they've run onto it, and when they've, they've got the people in, the Great Britain forwards and inside backs, and then our, our wider backs have just had so much room to move, and they've played brilliant football on, this, on these conditions. What would they have done on a, on a dry day? It would have been 30 or 40 points difference, I'm sure. I think one of the outstanding features is everybody has spoken of Mark Graham, who is normally the test captain, and he is the only person that Graham Lowe, the coach, says is a test certainty for selection. And many people thought that without his leadership, that this Kiwi side would be slightly deficient. I think they have proved all the critics wrong. Fred Arcoy has been a good captain. The forwards have played superbly well. And what an outstanding second row combination we have, or the, the back three, really, in terms of ball skills, in terms of speed, and in terms of combination together. The try that was set up when a high ball put up by Fred Arcoy early in the match, 
and Owen Wright was up there very quickly to tap it back for Hume again in basketball style and uh, Fred Akoy up to finish it he had started the move well that is the series for the Kiwis they have won two of the three test series the third one next week at Carlaw Park now becomes a formality which I'm sure the Kiwis will want to win for their own pride anyway the Kiwis have beaten Great Britain at the Addington Showgrounds in 